بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ولا خود ولا قوت الا بالله خلالی رالی حسبنا الله و نعم الوکیل نعم المولا و نعم النصیر Today we will continue our discussion about the derivation of Jacobian matrix in a general form. Uh, we showed before in the last session that uh, Jacobian is a map between the velocity of the joint space variables to the velocity of the task space variable. And uh, we have two types of uh, Jacobian, namely the one uh, which the task space variable of the end effector is represented in the linear velocity on the top side and the angle of velocity on the bottom side. But if we use a screw axis, nothing will, ch will be changed, but only the, uh, the replacement of uh, angular velocity on the top and the uh, linear velocity on the bottom will be uh, of interest. This will give us a uh, representation of a twist, uh, a six-tuple vector that can represent the velocity of the end effector. And by the definition, the Jacobian is the map between the vector velocity of the joint space to the vector velocity of the task space, or the screw-based, uh, or six-tuple uh, vector, not a three-by-one, but a six-by-one in general. If then we first uh, started with the conventional Jacobian, and uh, we showed that uh, the, the conventional Jacobian uh, can be find, I just go to this slide, slide number 21, <clears throat> which shows that we can find the Jacobian, uh, the uh, actual, the columns of the Jacobians can be simplified, uh, simplified by a, a cross vector matrix here, the I minus one plus P, that this P vector was a bit uh, involved how to find it, and uh, the ZI minus one. If we look at this uh, column vector, we give some example last uh, session about how to find the P. It was not very hard to define that, but uh, usually we first should find the ZI and P, and then the cross product for the revolut joint, and just a simple uh, vector, column vector for the uh, prismatic joint. Uh, if we go to screw-based, Uh, Jacobian, which is which we will be talking today, we'll see that uh, it is amazing that if we use the screw base uh, coordinate as we have before, we have very similar uh, format as we had in before, a cross product and a, uh, just a simple, there was S, Z, the Z was the angular, uh, the axis of angular rotation. And in a screw-based uh, or a screw representation, S has the same meaning. S is the, uh, the axis that about which the rotation will happen. And we have uh, very similar to that, not P star or whatever that we cannot find. It is S zero cross S. It is very amazing and very interesting that, again, screw makes the uh, modification and the manipulation uh, quite physically more interpretable and uh, simple to find. We can show that the Jacobian, if we use only, just use the screw coordinate, meaning that if we use the angular velocity on the top and then the linear velocity on the bottom, just this two is replaced uh, at the uh, before we had the cross uh, product on the top, but now we have it on the bottom. We can show this is very important that the Jacobian is nothing uh, but the screw axis uh, definition or the screw coordinate definition that we had before. Screw one, screw two, and the screw n. So the uh, 
the column of the Jacobians now have some physical interpretation. And these screws could be found for rotary joint by a cross product, for prismatic joint just by a simple finding the S. And finding the S hat is very simple, as are the angle of the rotation uh, or the angle of the motion, uh, the, the axis of the uh, angle of rotation or the axis of the uh, translational uh, motion in prismatic joint. Uh, but the S0 is like the P star that we have before. It's a bit more involved and we should define it quite well. So we can just give it uh, the Jacobian like that and uh, without any further uh, explanation, I ask you to find the Jacobians because we have worked on the screw base axis quite well. But we will give some iterative method here, just some examples that you can find this quite uh, easily. Uh, we can find the uh, axis, the S0 and S hat by inspection or by iterative method. I will explain both of these two methods to you. Okay, Jacobian is just a concatenation of the screw axis of different joints. And this is very, very important uh, notice. Now, uh, to find it, to give a bit more explanation, first of all, uh, the point that we find the end effector velocity, this P point, could be any point of interest. It could be the end effector point or the velocity of each point. We, we usually use the risk point also as well, the P or Q point. So, in general, uh, to make it a general derivation, uh, we consider this P point, any point of interest, it could be at the end effector point, at this uh, very last end point, or at the last joint, or some joint in between, if we have some intersecting point and the wrist point, we have the P point, as we had before in the forward kinematics map that we defined in last chapter. So, to find uh, S0, basically, this is the most important thing. The, the rest is very simple. So, the task variable is omega e, uh, the orientation of the end effector, but the velocity of interest is the velocity of point P that we require. Usually, we can consider this as the Jacobian. Uh, then, to assign the screw parameters, uh, the S zeros are very simple. If you have a joint axis here, the S is along this joint axis, uh, the same thing as Z in denovit hartenberg uh, But S zero uh, are somehow uh, important to find. And uh, basically this uh, direction of uh, uh, joint axis can be very simplified by, find by the uh, third column of the rotation matrix, uh, which is the little zero one, uh, represented in zero frame or in any other frame. And notice that all the vectors should be uh, considered in a specific frame that we usually use the zero frame, but it could be fine for uh, any other frame as well. But the S0 uh, represent the distance of this point uh, with respect to the uh, base frame. So if we would like to find the velocity of this as we define the screw axis, we attach uh, arbitrary uh, or uh, auxiliary as a fictitious uh, frame zero frame on the point of interest, on the point that we would like to find the velocity. If this is the point of interest, we have a zero uh, direction. With the same direction, we put a coordinate frame on this uh, point of interest. Now, zero uh, SOI uh, means that the diff, uh, the uh, displacement or the position vector of this point with respect, for example, to the frame zero, it will be give us as zero or one uh, 
and to one to two and we can go to all the other axes uh, with, the, with the index i that we represent here so soi denotes the origin of frame i as we required here with respect to the instantaneous frame on point p so for example so one as you see is the uh, the the position vector that we have in here, uh, the point O with respect to frame zero, as we consider zero here. And this vector can be defined by inspection or by iterative method. Uh, we emphasize uh, on iterative method for more complicated robots and used by inspection by some simple robot. We give both of them uh, and it's very good. Now, in an iterative method, it is very, very simple. I have wrote a program to do that. You can wrote your own program, and we will provide the program to you uh, to use that. Of course, we will provide the program to you after the uh, assignment uh, in order that you have worked on the program yourself and then use the uh, somehow more professional program that we have or TA team have provided for you. Now, uh, to do that uh, in an iterative way, it is very, very simple. Maybe it might have some notations here, but very, very simple. Uh, first of all, uh, we consider that which frame the, uh, we would like to find, uh, which point of interest is uh, in our case. If this is the P point here, uh, we consider the frame J uh, as the frame, uh, the, as the, uh, for example, if this is the frame J1 that is represented by screw based J plus 1 uh, in, in the, the Navitar, in a screw based uh, or in the Navitar. Uh, representation uh, then we consider that uh, the initial point very simple of course SJI uh, the S in this uh, frame uh, is very simple 001 it's the Z axis because the Z was defined as the axis of rotation and there is no difference, no point difference between, uh, no distance between this uh, frame that assigned here, the red frame, to this frame, to the original frame J1. Now, we have a forward computation to find if, if this point is not the end effect, or is it something in the middle? And uh, we find the forward uh, iteration to find the SIs, and then some backward computation to do that. And this is very simplified <clears throat> by if we have the SJ plus 1, uh, then we can go for J plus 2, 3, and forward. And by this means that SI plus 1 is ZI uh, with com uh, multiplied by the R, uh, basically the rotation matrix of I to the J. So if we go forward, I is equal to uh, J plus 1, J plus 2, and forward, uh, considering that, we just simply use the RIJ, which we have defined in the kinematic, uh, forward kinematic uh, derivation, multiplied by S0. This is very simplified. It, it can even seen by the inspection. Very simply, we can find the uh, Z axis. The Z axis are uh, represented by the S1. But what about the SO uh, I plus 1? The vectors that we would like to find in here, we go one by one. This there, there is a link length here. If this is 0, if this is 0, we can find the SO I1 as the previous one plus this length, this R, we define this R as the link length, basically. The difference between these two frames uh, multiplied by the uh, appropriate uh, uh, rotation matrix uh, to find the SOI1. So if we will start with zero and go forward, add this uh, link length to this, then the next one, the next one, and the next one, and then we can iteratively find all the SOI plus one as we require here. And the rotation matrices, of course, can be uh, iteratively find by multiplication of the rotation matrix of Ri plus 1 to I, 
I to J as we had before. And everything is represented in the, uh, in the frame, uh, J as we require. So this goes forward. In the terms of backward, we have this same thing. The only difference is here it is a negative one. If you have this one and we would like to go backward, uh, you can see that we have the same old uh, the, uh, the, wall, the same old uh, for the S1, we have the zero, uh, the Z1, the Z axis uh, represented in, uh, in the J frame. And here, the RI plus one uh, should be considered to come one step back uh, with RI plus one to J minus with the minus sign uh, to the uh, previous uh, SO. I that has been found. In all these three, <clears throat> the only thing <clears throat> which might be <clears throat> not very clearly defined here is the R1. The R is the difference between these two axes, and this can be, this is actually, if we have a link length, and we have some prismatic joint or a link offset, uh, this can be defined by the uh, third column uh, of the rotation matrix, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the transfer Formation matrix that can be simplified by <clears throat> simplifying by uh, A I D I and S alpha I in general uh, representation. So R I to I is very simple and Z I is very simple, and then you can use this uh, coordinate to find the S O I S in an iterative way. It it gives you a longer way uh, to find the S O I S, but it is quite naturally done by <coughs> computer iteration. iteration. <coughs> uh, so very well, uh, when we have SOIs and SIs, don't forget uh, that the main idea is here, given in this uh, the, uh, slide 29, we should find the screw axes and just uh, use them as the column vector of the Jacobian. And this screw axis, as you see, is simplified by, if there, we have a rotary joint, S hat, S zero crosses hat, and we have prismatic joint, S zero in S hat. And all of this should be represented in the base frame or in any frame of interest that you would like to find. So this too, as you see, when we have this for the P vector, as you see, this is the, not the intermediate point that we considered, then we can define the Jacobian here. By this means, the velocity of this point is fine, but the orientation of the end vector is considered as the Jacobian matrix, matrices as we defined in here. Now, go through, uh, this is not very hard, it seems to be some notation, you know, but it is very, very simple, just by some simple calculation you can go forward to that. Uh, in the first example, I do the same thing by inspection, and then uh, for a simple case, and then for some six degree of rhythm, uh, other example, I do it by iteration, uh, as uh, mentioned in the next slide. Consider the three RRR manipulator as we have here. These three RR manipulators. So we would like, for example, considering the velocity of the end effector, the Q point, as uh, the, in the first example, and we would like to find the Jacobian uh, that gives us the, uh, the uh, angular velocity of the end effector omega e and the uh, v q the uh, vector point here. Of course, this is a planar case. Uh, it is a three by three in uh, general uh, Jacobian de derivation. We find the uh, uh, six column vector, so we have uh, three, uh, six by three vector, and then we can find the three by three Jacobian from that. To do that, just go to the screw axis. Let's see what is the screw axis. So we have a joint axis here. So the screw axis is here, S1, very simple along the z-axis. What about the screw axis here? We have a rotation about the screw axis. So we have S2 here, or dollar $2 here. The screw axis 2 is here, and then a screw axis 3 is here. So very simply, we can see that S1, S2, S3, all of them 
in, in the reference frame is along the z-axis. Very simple, no iteration is required because all of them is uh, parallel to each other. But what about the S0, S0 tree, S0 2 or S0 1 can do it by iteration or by vector manipulation here. Let me define that first. What is SO3? SO3 means that the point of interest is here. As you see, we have the red. Uh, here we have black, of course, but this, we have uh, implemented a, a, a frame, a fixed frame on the point of interest, which is Q in here. Uh, and we would like to find the difference of this point to the joint tree. So this is the, uh, the red vector is basically in this direction, of course. Uh, in this direction, since the frame is here, this direction, this gives us SO3. And SO3 is nothing but the length of this vector, we call it A3, in a negative uh, direction, minus A3, uh, represented in the frame zeros, because we have all the uh, vectors uh, represented in frame zero. So in frame three, it is very simple. It is minus A3. We just uh, multiply it by a uh, rotation matrix three to zero to uh, replace it into the zero frame. And this has been found uh, before in our kinematic uh, problem. So we, 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 we would like to come to this one, which gives you with, uh, C1 to 3 and S1 to 3 in the, uh, these two coordinates. <clears throat> now, when we have SO3, Nick, we can go through SO2. SO2 is the, this, this vector, this blue vector. We have this vector here, the same way as we find this vector, we can find this vector. This vector has also a minus A2 uh, by a R2 to zero. And then you can add this vector to this vector to find that minus the previous one that we had before. By a very simple inspection way, we can find SO2 here. The uh, difference of this point to here. Consider, notice that. It was very important, the definition of the screw, the point that you would like to find the velocity. You put an auxiliary, a fixture, uh, uh, consider it in your mind, a fixture uh, coordinate frame uh, along the zero axis, a fixture coordinate frame on the point of axis, which is along the zero axis. And you find S0 as the point of the screw, the, different, the, the vector of the screw axis with respect to this point. And as you see here, we can simply go through this and the, the green one is very similar. We have this one and add to this one, we find these three, three vectors. The Jacobian is not yet finished. We have find all the components. We have find the S1, S2Is, and S0Is. We should just make the cross multiplication here. The cross multiplication is very simple. We can do this because all of the joints are uh, rotary. We use this cross multiplication. So S0Is are here, as you see. All of them are 0, 0, 1. And by doing this cross multiplication, we reach to these three uh, points. And as you see, uh, three rows of these vectors of this matrix is zero because then uh, the Jacobian M shall be three by three. The first vector, non-zero vector here, or the non-zero row here, gives the orientation of the um, uh, um, uh, moving platform or the uh, end effector, as you see, is one, one, one. So phi dot is equal to theta dot one, theta dot two, or theta dot three, as you see in here. And this two equation gives you the velocity in x direction, in y direction, and the velocity in zero direction is zero. So you can just simply use this three by three vector, as you see here. As you see in here, the result is exactly the same as what you have in uh, the previous way, the general way to find that, and also uh, exactly similar to just 
the make the derivative find the derivative of the forward kinematics if you have the forward kinematic in the last chapter and just find the time derivative to that you can do that in this way but if we, if we just do the uh, time derivative we don't have this inspection that uh, uh, the Jacobian matrix consists of the screw axis uh, but here we see that this is quite related to each other uh, quite very well the same example can be done not for the Q uh, but for the wrist point consider if you would like to find the velocity of the wrist point very simple, simpler than the end effector because uh, we have uh, less computation here. Uh, for the risk point, if you consider that the red vector will be disappeared because we have this velocity here, uh, so the SIs are as before, uh, but SO3, as you see here, the peg uh, here, uh, in this here, we have this vector uh, SO3. Uh, this one, this uh, length, but since we have the P, we consider the uh, coordinate frame, the auxiliary coordinate frame on point three. This should be. This is equal to zero, and we find the same way M A two and A one multiplied by that by a iterative way, and we find this two vector. The Jacobian will be here, as you see here. We have zeros because we don't have this A three. This does doesn't come this a3 and theta3 doesn't come into the picture of the velocity of p and then you find the velocity of the p vector quite uh, similar to the previous one shorter and exactly the same as we have find it in our uh, previous example uh, the, in before so this uh, method gives by inspection and you find what is the, uh, the definition of this vector SO3 and SO2 and in many many examples especially when you have uh, in your exam when you don't have the much time to do it iteratively uh, you can do it uh, uh, by inspection of course I uh, recommend you to write your own program to have uh, this kind of iteration being done in Maple or MATLAB for your case. I do the same example here now not by inspection but by iteration that you can find the iteration way uh, as well. By iteration if we consider the first example we consider Q as our uh, point of interest so it would be very simple again we should find these three vectors and then uh, find SO3 but as you see we go about one by one iterative many to uh, understand the iterative method that we are uh, doing here so we consider that the initial point is in here in the, is with respect to frame 4 so j is equal to 4 s4 is equal to 0 0 1 and s04 is equal to 0 0 0 for this uh, the difference between these two are uh, like that and if we don't have any forward uh, iteration because this is the last point but we have the we have three backward iteration we should go to i equal to three from here we use this uh, the same thing uh, z3 is r3 to 4 as 3 and this and because these two axes are parallel to each other doesn't change the s of s3 is equal to s4 and the same thing for s2 and s1 but about so3 we use the iterative method we have so3 the r1 r was if you remember if you remember the iterative one r was a i and d i we don't have the d i and s alpha i here we have only a i we don't need to even uh, understand that this is the uh, what is the length and uh, just by simple calculation a i d i or d i is r zero so we have a i here the r three to one and then we have the same uh, previous uh, rotation as we see here the same result a 3 c 2 to 1 as we have it before in here you see in slide 33 exactly the same thing uh, we can find in here 
So iteratively it also give you a same result, maybe uh, with less uh, smartness, with less intuition, but more uh, iterative and computer-wise uh, iteration. And the same thing can go through the S2 and S1, and uh, again, we have the same old A2 and A1 multiplied by internet is not working quite well, uh, and uh, we have some problem uh, again in uh, our presentation. I hope that you have my voice now. Please feedback me if I have the voice and very good. Anyways, as you see in here, uh, we have the same old A2 and A1 multiplied by the same thing and we have the S eyes and S zero eyes, and then do this multiplication, this cross validation, and they will say we find the same Jacobian matrix as before, and we result in the same thing. Usually, we don't use iterative method for simple cases. Uh, we use the inspection, but for a more complicated robot, like a six degree of freedom, elbow manipulator, it is better to do it by iteration uh, if you don't want to uh, consider everything. Of course, the people of different, uh, usually uh, some students have very good 3D uh, visualization in their mind. They can very, very uh, easily see the, uh, the SO3 and the S0s here and then can find the way inspection. But usually if you don't want to make any uh, mistake, you can do it by iteration. So for elbow manipulator, as we have discussed it before, unfortunately it has not a peer per uh, theorem. The uh, three axes of rotation at, at the end are not intersecting. So we have a point uh, Q and the, the risk point is the, at the point uh, S4 here, uh, Z4 here. Uh, consider this point of interest. We would like to find the velocity of the wrist, for example, in here. And to do that, we start with that. This is just for uh, to give you some uh, more practice about forward and backward iteration. If we consider this point of interest, so we should uh, put a, a, a coordinate frame uh, quite parallel to the zero frame on here, the red coordinate frame here. But uh, considering the iteration one, we find the initial condition, of course, for the S5 and S05 are equal to zero because the uh, 0, 5, and 4 are uh, just uh, on, uh, intersecting at this point. So these are 0. For the sixth one, if you would, go, would like to go forward, we have only one joint forward. This uh, with the D6 uh, value. And the uh, S6 could be very simplified by uh, R5 to 4, just a, a representation here. And SO6 gives you the R5 uh, to this, if th the sixth value, of course. The sixth value, as you see, is intersecting with the uh, fourth value. So it doesn't uh, provide any uh, direction in S0, basically. Now, if we go to the, to the backward, we should go from here all the way back to these points that we have in here. Uh, so to do that, uh, we go one by one. Uh, first, just do one of the iteration quite uh, delicately, and then you can find the other iteration as well. So we have the S4 here. Now we would like to come to S3. As we see the Z3 is here and Z4 is here and we have a difference of minus A4 in here like before. So S4 and S3, in terms of S, 
We just need the uh, rotation matrix. We just need to make it zero, zero, one by rotation matrix gives you to zero minus one and zero. And this is quite uh, correct. Uh, uh, we can find it also by inspection uh, that uh, the uh, zero three is in the minus dire uh, the, the direction of uh, S my y uh, four. As this is Z four, and this is X four. This would be minus y four, and minus y four is exactly. Uh, the same in this direction. We do this by inspection. We just multiply it by the rotation matrix, and this will be fine quite well. And what about SO3? SO3 is the minus A4, as you see here, minus A4 multiplied by uh, R4, or minus A4 multiplied by 4, R4 to 4, and this gives you very simple uh, difference that you see in here. So, uh, and we have the rotation matrix as well in each direction. In each iteration, we find all these three, and then we go back now from here to here to here. Let's go another way back from here to here. These two are parallel, so S3 is not changing. But uh, the SO3, the vector, this should be added to uh, the previous one. And this is added by A3 uh, multiplied by R3 to 4. A3 will come into the picture in here. And then we can go forward to, to the beginning to find all the direction here. Then and at the end, we do the cross uh, multiplications here. And as you see at the big, uh, in the top uh, part, we have the angular velocity. And at the bottom part, we have the uh, linear velocity of point. Uh, these two are zero because we are considering this point and these two uh, other vectors are equal to uh, zero as expected. The Jacobian, uh, which is quite uh, sophisticated, can be found by an iterative way uh, in this means. Any other, any question if you have up to here? I have one more example to give it to you, to this uh, case, which is the Stanford arm. If you have any question, please just raise your hand that I can see you and then uh, open the microphone for you to uh, speak up. In, uh, in the other example, we have also P uh, point here. Uh, we have two R, the first two joints are uh, rotary, then prismatic, and then three rotary one, which are uh, just intersecting at each other. Again, if you would like to find the velocity of P point, which is simpler than the Q point here, uh, we can have the forward iteration from here to here. So we have J3 here, S4 and SO4 are equal to 0, 0, 001 and 0, 0, 0 as before. The 5 and 6 one, uh, just uh, by simple rotation, we can find this one. No uh, S0 and for uh, for uh, I equal to 5, S, uh, S3 is also changed by a rotation matrix, nothing uh, in the uh, S0 because all of these are intersecting to each other, so this part is equal to 0. So for forward iteration, very simple. For backward iteration, we have the S0 as well. Uh, in, in the backward uh, uh, iteration, as you see in here, uh, we can find uh, Z2 by 2 to 3, exactly as simple as uh, like that. S2, R2, uh, R1 to 3, Z1, these two are find very simple. And then we have this part. As you see in here, this is different than the previous cases. Uh, we don't have A's here for the uh, this joint, that second joint is prismatic. We don't have A here, we have D. And by using, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, this general formulation, this general formulation, the S alpha and D cos of, uh, cosine of alpha, this uh, sine is zero, cosine is equal to one, and the R is equal to DI in this example.
and you have uh, the diyl the d minus d3 here uh, d3 by r2 3 with a minus sign so we have this one here now if we have the d, d1 here we have a d2 as well uh, comes into this picture and we have s2 find in here and finally the s1 uh, will be found in this way and the jacobian can be found by uh, uh, simple uh, cross uh, multiplication uh, you have to practice this uh, in more detail to find the Jacobian matrices as well. Any questions? Usually we have two people quite questionable, Zahra and Hussein. It seems that both of them are quite satisfied or maybe not uh, well followed me but I think uh, that you have followed me any if there is no problem let me just go uh, to the next part uh, which is very interesting up to here we are talking about uh, just finding the Jacobian from here to the end of the session it would be much more interesting if you have found the Jacobian in a way, then uh, you can uh, you can have the characteristic of using the characteristic then and the physical properties of uh, Jacobian. So just bear with me. We we will talk about many many interesting issues uh, from here uh, up to now. Anyways, yeah, Zahra said that uh, she is following. Very good. I hope all, all of you are following. And uh, it is very good to have some feedback from you uh, uh, in the chat box, at least, to see how are you following me and how you do you uh, find the uh, course up to here. Jacobian is very important because it is not just relating the velocities but also the forces and torques that we call as wrench. Very, very uh, interesting and uh, surprising. Let me define the static wrench. The static wrench, like the motion twist that we defined uh, in the screw base, for a 60 degree of freedom robot, for a fully uh, equ uh, actuated robot, we have a, a robot that is basically uh, inserting some forces uh, to the environment. We call it static right now. We don't go to the dynamics. The dynamic will be go in the next chapter. For now, consider that we are just pushing the an environment uh, with some force and some torques. In many applications of the robotic manipulators, uh, we are exerting, we are uh, having some uh, force interchange to the environment. This is an uh, example of a uh, car body uh, part that uh, the robot is machining on it or doing some manipulation on this part. So consider that this robot is exerting some force to the environment. A general force, we call it Fe. F, that is, uh, that is uh, uh, basically uh, applied force of the in the factor. And also Ne, we consider N as the uh, moment or the torque that we are applying. Not only the force, the force you can find easily, but when we have some sort of uh, uh, rotational motion or rotational force acting to the system, we might have also some uh, torques as we consider it with the vector Ne. So again, we have two spaces now. One space is the torques, the actuator torques or forces, depending on the rotary or prismatic. If you have a rotary joint, we have a, 
uh, torque uh, applied on the motor. If you have a prismatic joint, you have a force applied in the actuator. So we have a vector of actuator forces or joint forces, joint space forces or torques. Uh, we call it force and torque together. So we have a joint space torque. Usually since we are using DC motors, we have more torques. Since we are using more rotary joints, we have more torques. But this torque is general. It could be torque or force. It is torque if we have a, roll, a, rot, a revolute joint. If you have a prismatic joint, it's the force force that the actuator is uh, exerting. So we have a space of uh, joint forces and torques, we call it here. Everything is now by static, yes. It means that the rotor is not mo moving right now. It is now just exerting some force there to here. Uh, to consider that, if you would like to put some force on a wall, you have to have some muscle forces on your hand. What we would like to do is to relate between the muscle forces or the actuative forces to the wrench that we are applying to the environment. The wrench that we are applying to the environment, again, is defined by a screw axis, basis, or a screw coordinate, or a six tuple coordinate. Uh, we have the forces and the torques and the forces comes at the top and the f torques comes at the bottom. You know that the torques are usually considered by a cross multiplication of uh, force by uh, uh, length. So uh, this is very similar to what we have before, but now everything in a, another space of force and torques. So the Fe is the applied force to the environment, and E applied torque to the environment, and we call the script F uh, or the wrench. The wrench uh, is uh, a screw-based coordinate like twist to represent that. Now, what is the relation between these two to that? Do we have a map? Do we can we consider that if I exert some torques in my muscles, how much force and torques is acted on the environment in a static way, as, as we mentioned here. Or if I would like to put some force on the wall or on the environment, how much torques, actuator torque should be provided for that? It is very, very interesting to see that. Jacobian transpose. Jacobian transpose, consider this map. Jacobian transpose will give the torques that you require. This is the relation that you have. Torque, the tau, the inf if we would like to, add, to insert some force to the environment, the amount of force, the mapping of this force on our joint space, the amount of actuated forces that we require is by Jacobian transpose. It is really amazing. And it is very, very important that Jacobian not only uh, relates the velocity of joint space to the task space, but Jacobian transpose will have the inverse relation in terms of the torques and static forces. So, all of this that I'm talking is uh, related in this here, in this equation. The tau, the actuator forces that we require, is Jacobian transpose multiplied by the force. This can be extended in dynamic case. We will see it in future. But here, consider Jacobian transpose also as a map as a mathematical representation to go from one space to another space. And this is Jacobian transpose, not Jacobian. But of course, if you have found the Jacobian, you have also the Jacobian transpose. And in linear algebra, we know that 
uh, it is quite different when we have the transpose we are just changing the range and the uh, output range and domain of the system in a linear algebra and this is the case Jacobian itself was the, the forward math between the velocity of here to here Jacobian transpose is the backward math between the task space to this here means that if f is multiplied by the Jacobian transpose, it will give you the top. And of course, we have the inverse uh, map as well. We will talk about the inverse map in the next session in both cases. So this means that we don't need any uh, force or let's say newton euler method to find the forces if we are talking about the uh, static branch uh, to find the relation between that. Of course, this should be uh, proven. Uh, we, I have just claimed that this is the relation between that. But how we can prove that? This relation is true. We can prove it by principle of virtual work. Very interesting, very simple, and very, very uh, important in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, for especially for non-mechanical students. If you have some electrical students, some people with less mechanical background, virtual work is very simple. Let me just uh, give some uh, explanation on the virtual work method and then prove this relation in just three sentences or three equations. Amazing. What is the principle of virtual work? The virtual uh, work uh, principle is based on the virtual displacement. Since that consider that we have a system uh, interconnecting many parts to it and it is at the static balance. So some forces are distributed in this system. For example, we are considering that and uh, some forces are distributed in here. Now, uh, a virtual displacement is not a true displacement, a very infinitesimal displacement at each direction that we would like to have. Uh, but this is virtual. The important of virtual displacement is if you have a real displacement, if you are over here and we have a real displacement, then the geometry will be changing. But if you have the dis uh, virtual displacement, it is very, very small. So the, the geometry is not dis uh, changing. We are at the same geometry, at the same kinematic uh, configuration without changing any uh, angles and so forth and so on but uh, there are some forces and some uh, movement there and a work or virtual work why we call it virtual work because it is a virtual displacement this is not a true displacement uh, the work will be defined uh, simply by uh, multiplying the uh, the forces by the uh, displacement now, virtual work in joint space would be quite simple as delta Q, small delta, not, uh, not D. DQ is a real displacement, a real differential displacement. But delta Q is very similar to, uh, to, to D, but it is virtual. It means that it is not true but it is considering by, uh, in, in my mind. So delta Q is uh, the virtual displacement in the joints. Delta X or delta T, the, the script X, is the virtual displacement X, Y, Z. These three are very simplified and also virtual displacement in the uh, thetas, in the uh, rotational motion. And the rotational motion theta x, theta y, theta z, which we usually use the screw displacement to have the physical uh, meaning inside here, uh, delta theta times s hat. Very simple, we can find the theta delta x and delta theta as the virtual displacement of the end effector. So we have the virtual uh, displacement at the task space, 
we call it delta x. And the virtual displacement at the joint space uh, coming by that. And if the system is under balance, uh, virtual work principle says that the total work is equal to zero. Delta, of course, virtual work will be equal to zero. And from this, we can find uh, very, very important uh, intuitions here, both in static and also in dynamic uh, relation. I don't know if Ali is with us or not. Uh, Ali, are you here? No, I think. And it's not in this class, but uh, recently we have worked on the virtual displacement. Ali has done very, very interesting work on the virtual displacement and virtual work approach to find dynamic formulation for uh, many manipulators. <clears throat> Anyways, the virtual work approach means that delta W is equal to zero. But what is the delta W? is the balance of the forces. We have two types of the forces. We don't consider the internal forces. We knew we used only the external forces in here. We call that the delta uh, W. The work that has been done on the joint is a multiplication or a simple multiplication of tau to delta Q plus the work that has been done or at the end effector. Why we are considering minus? Because as you see here, we define the applied force to the environment as F and N. The only reason is that. The force applied to the environment is plus. So the, the force reflected to the joint, to the, to the robot, is minus. We are using the wrench applied to the robot by the environment because of the third uh, relation of the Newton uh, law. Uh, every action has a reaction force. We uh, find it like that. So if you look at this, you can see that the virtual work approach, you can see that uh, minus the total work, the, the summation of these two, tau times delta Q plus F transpose delta times delta X is equal to zero. And uh, this means that this is zero for all virtual displacement. This means that this is always true. But now we have the Jacobian relation. The Jacobian relation was, what is the relation between uh, x dot and q dot. x dot and q dot was related by the Jacobian. So x dot is dx with dt, uh, dq to dt. So uh, this the same relation comes for the virtual displacement. Delta x is equal to Jacobian delta q. And if you just replace the delta x to Jacobian delta q, then you can uh, factorize delta Q here, this equation is always zero for all arbitrary delta Q, small delta Qs, so this part should be zero. And this part should be zero, means tau transpose minus F transpose Jacobian is zero, just take the transpose here, tau is Jacobian transpose times F. Tau is Jacobian transpose times F. It is amazing how we can uh, formulate this equation just by only three lines, and we can prove that the Jacobian works also for the forces. And you cannot uh, imagine how much physical insight and properties this can we give you to. I will discuss it hopefully next session. I hope that you have worked a bit on how to derive the Jacobian. Jacobian is very important. And then see how important. And you do remember, Jacobian is composed of the columns that are the screw axes. Don't remember, don't forget that. The screw axes are so important here. And Jacobian transpose will relate tau to F. <sighs> Jacobian transpose 
maps the wrenches F applied to the environment into the actuator torques tau. Let's give an example. Consider the three R R manipulators as we have before, but now it is in uh, contact with a stiff environment, uh, some sort of uh, motion, and we are adding some forces here. Of course, we have some forces here. We have a planar case, some forces and some torques in 2D, some forces Fx and Fy, and some torques, as you see here, for example, uh, in direction of N0. We can just move it here this way and then rotate it along the z-axis. We have three axes of rotation here. Since we have uh, derived the Jacobian matrix before we can see that the forces that we are acting on this system relating to the torques that we needed to, to be acted by the actuators, three torques are related by this tau is equal to Jacobian transpose F. Since we have the Jacobian, we can see that the taus are related to the Jacobian to Fx and Fy, tau 2, Fx and, and Z, uh, the torque in Z direction, and tau 3, Fx, Fy, and, and Z. And if we would like to have a general force here, we have to actuate these things here. So if we would like to add a force here, and this is Jacobian, and Jacobian is configuration dependent. If we would like to consider our hand, if we would like to add some force in here, we have some forces here. If we would like to add some force in here, it is much different. And you can imagine, this is harder to do that way uh, rather than this way. And our hands, uh, human, are designed by God uh, to do manipulation, very good manipulation with its hand, to do the painting with its hand, to do the writing with its hand, and do some work with its hand. And usually we do the hand work on the configuration space, uh, some place that is very good for that. And this can be represented by Jacobian and Jacobian transpose. For now, you have to learn how to uh, find the Jacobian correctly. Jacobian can be found by three ways. Again, I remember, I remind, review the two uh, previous ones. The first way, the simplest way, if you have the forward kinematics, just do the time derivative, to take the time derivative of that. That's all. If you don't want to do that, you can use a uh, uh, Denavit Hartenberg representation and find the P stars, as you remember, and find the general formula. And the most important and effective one, Jacobian, are determined by the screw axis. The columns of the Jacobians are nothing but the screw axis of different joints. And this screw axis somehow is relating not only the velocities, but also the forces to the system. Velocity this way, forces that way. This is somehow the Jacobian transpose comes from the uh, task space to the joint space, but uh, the, uh, the Jacobian comes from the joint space to the task space. And that is quite uh, amazing and quite interesting to see how we can do that. All right, so uh, if we go to, uh, of course, we can do this relation, we can find this relation, but sophisticated newton order method to find the forces and noise. But I don't want to give you this notation, just use the virtual, uh, virtual work, the principle of a virtual work, and this relation to find the relation between forces and torques. Now, we are now ready to uh, define uh, some characteristics of the Jacobian. If there is any questions uh, or comments up to here, please. Yes, Zahra has some questions. Please, Zahra. Hi, Professor. Um, Hi. 
actually uh, one thing that uh, is confusing for me. It seems to me that if we have some force and torque, we, we will have some movement as well. So I don't know how we assume that we have forces, but um, no movement. Uh, you mean, uh, I didn't get your question quite well, your voice is somehow uh, interrupting. We have some forces and also some movements, so... I'm saying if we have forces, okay. it seems to me that we need to have movement as well, but we assume we have forces, but we don't have any movement. Okay. You know, um, if, if there is no environment here, if we apply some force here, some torque here, the robot will move. Now, consider the robot is locked to the environment. So it don't have any movement. You know, consider my free hand. If I put some uh, motion here, some torques in here, my hand will move. But now consider that we don't have the motion. We have locked the motion in here. Now I have put some constraint here. Can, can I have some more forces here without any motion? Of course you can have some. Consider that you have uh, some uh, 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 fruit in your hand or an egg in your hand and then you add some forces. <laughs> it will uh, explode that. How this will work? You're adding forces, you have some more forces in here. So have forces here generated by the torques. We are at the static balance. When we have the static balance, the torques are not generating motion. It will generate some forces, some interacting force in the environment. Consider that you have put a screw just on a wall or on a, on a, uh, a, a screw uh, or a wrench on, a, on the wall. If you move it, you just, you don't have any motion. You can pinch, you can punch, you can, you know, explode things by adding force to that. Of course, for a robotics uh, woman like you, you always are talking about motion and dynamics. Now we, do, we are not going to the dynamics. Don't, don't worry. We go to the dynamics in the next chapter. But here, what we are thinking, it is more important than just motion and or the forces. It is a map. You can consider F you can consider script F, you can consider tau, and you can relate these two together by a joint, by a Jacobian map. The map is uh, given just simply uh, by the Jacobian transpose. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Any other questions? Of course, Hussein has some question. I was wondering why Hussein was uh, just uh, not talking up to here. Go ahead, Jose. Jose, can you open? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, about uh, this slide 46. Maybe my question is the same as Zahra, I don't know. Uh, the, the end effector, say for example, this is end effector is uh, exerting a force on a wall, a fixed wall. Okay. okay. Uh, Say, for example, a specific force F. Uh, we, like then exceed, we then exceed F. Mm -hmm. We exert more force. Uh, mm -hmm. We can find, maybe we can find that uh, theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 3 are the same. Even T1. Tau. tau 1 or theta 1? Uh, no tau 1 or theta 1? No displacement. We don't have any displacement. We have a configuration here, theta yes. 1, theta 2, theta 3. We are exerting force to the environment, but we don't have any motion. Yes. We are, we mm -hmm. are, we are changing theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. We, we, have, we, we cannot change it because there is a wall here. We cannot yes. move here. But the force is, but the for, exerted torques are, are increasing. Yeah, the, the, exact, the exerted force is increasing, the motion is not changing, 
the torques are increasing, the forces, uh, the resulting force on the wall will also increase. Oh, but, uh, oh yes, but the, the Jacobian is constant. The Jacob, of course, why, why the Jacobian is constant? Because no, Jacobian stationary. is configuration, yeah, configuration dependent on the configuration is not changed. Okay. So at each Jacobian, again, I rem remind you, uh, we are not talking about the influence of the actuator torques that we are talking here in terms of the motion. We are giving a map. You want to exert a force here, for example, 100 kilonewtons here. What would be the torques that you require at your joint? That can be found by Jacobian transport, where you are located. If your hand is fully extended, then the force is much more simpler than when your hand is not fully extended. We will discuss about that in future. Can I add a question? Sure. Uh, if, if I had a method uh, to calculate tau's mm -hmm. and f's without mm -hmm. knowing j, variating tau and variating f, can I, can I deduce j? Not just by one simple calculation, but if you have a number of calculation of F and tau in static, and also you need to have, uh, the, the question was, if we have the F and tau, can we find the J transpose? Of course, we can find it by calibration method or by identification method. I will talk about that yes, uh, in the next chapter. Uh, we can do that. Uh, by just the mapping. Of course, it should be a static balance. If it is not static balance, some other terms comes into the picture. I will talk about that in the next chapter. Thank you, thank you. Very well. Uh, let me just uh, give one simple Jacobian characteristic, and we will continue that in the next session, just to uh, provide you with that. So, we have two issues here. Uh, the joint space twist, Q dot, will relate it to the uh, task space uh, X dot uh, with the Jacobian uh, transpose. And as we see here, the wrench is also the inverse. The wrench is also re related to that. Consider the inverse problem. If we go to the Jacobian characteristic, if we consider the inverse problem. We have the Jacobian quite well defined, or the Jacobian transpose. Can we find the inverse map here? It depends if the Jacobian is invertible. And what is when the Jacobian? Of course, the Jacobian is configuration dependent. In At each configuration has some properties, a simple matrix. It can be inverted. If, of course, if it is squared, and if it is, the determinant of J is not equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, it is not invertible. And we would, would like to see what will happen, when this will happen, and how, what is the, the relation between this, which we call it singularity, Nukhtaya Takin, in Persian, takin, singularity. And what is the relation between the singularity of the Jacobian with the forward kinematics, with other relation? <laughs> it is interesting to see that. Do you remember that we have found the boundaries of the workspace? Do you remember in the forward kinematic, we have two solutions. Do you remember multiple solution? And then at a point, when these double solutions come to each other, we have at the boundary of the... We will see that when the double uh, solution, we have a double solution, we, have at the, we are at the singular point. We, when we are at the boundary of the equation, we are at the singular point. The Jacobian will become uh, uh, singular. The determinant of the Jacobian will be uh, equal to zero. And it is very, very interesting that what will happen if we don't have the inverse uh, quite accurately defined, what will happen to that? 
and we will discuss about that with this very nice picture of a baby would like to reach the toy but it cannot reach it because of the singular configuration let's talk about singularity let's talk about uh, dexterity let's talk about isotropy manipulability and condition number uh, on the Jacobian characteristic and the physical properties of that in uh, hopefully next session just to remind you today is uh, the deadline for the uh, for your assignment please do the assignment on the deadline I extended the project part uh, for you for your video request to do to Wednesday but complete everything that uh, you should completely understand the forward kinematic to the to here uh, it was an extended uh, timeline to have your uh, assignment here the next assignment will be on the Jacobians we are all already uh, more than half uh, away from here and then you can use that uh, in this case uh, very well if there is any question I will be more than happy to answer you and of course uh, after a short break maybe about 10 minutes uh, we have the uh, office hours and if you have any questions you would like to talk to me uh, privately or in uh, in another space uh, please let me know thank you very much for everybody to join us and uh, good uh, luck and goodbye take care of your health uh, the situation in Tehran is not very good and also in other uh, places in, uh, in Iran please take care of your health uh, by just uh, not touching other people uh, don't uh, be very careful about the situation uh, thank you very much and uh, good luck bye